So here we are at the red Facebook giant 360 camera. What's this thing called? It's called the Manifold? Manifold. Manifold. I'm here with Matt Celia, LightSail VR, Kevin Cruz, Kodak PixPro. What do you guys think about this camera? It's big. Yeah. It is big, but you know, this camera is a really important step in the evolution of you know VR cinema capture. And I think it's important to think about it not just as a VR camera, where obviously all of us are, but as a really important tool uh, for creatives. Obviously, if you're working with this, you have a sizable budget, you need sizable gear, you need a sizable crew. So like if you're an indie person, like don't hate on it, just know that that's probably not for you. But if yeah. someone were to hand you a $5 million budget, you'd probably want to use something like this if it fit your creative. What I really wanted to do is interview someone on Facebook to ask about this, like A, how can you get access, what, what grants or applications do you need to apply for? But it's probably like the Oculus, you know. I'm sure it's a camera you're not going to own. You're going to rent this from it's like a Radiant or totally, something Totally, yeah. Those are all the questions of like how much to rent it, how big is the file for one minute, all these questions I have about this camera. No doubt, in order to use the manifold, in my opinion, and by the way, I'm not an expert, I don't know, yes. I, I'm really on the outside of this, but coming from a professional cinema background, you need to have a professional cinema pipeline. Yeah. And so working with people, you know, ACs that know how to use it, uh, working with a post team that knows how to spec it out, doing camera tests, that's all important to making something like this that's a professional device, I think, worthy of work uh, for your workflow. But the idea is great, like look, you're getting 6K, uh, sorry, 8K, uh, 60 frames a second. Um, you're going to be able to generate, you know, six DOF style depth maps. You have red helium sensors, so you're getting 14 stops or more dynamic range. You're getting great color space. You're getting like a nice, crisp image. Like you can't compare this to a Candau or yeah. or anything else on the market, really. Like this is a very professional solution with good thermal management. Real professional optics. Cameras on the bottom and on the top for those who are using, you know, Google Jump so stuff. It's really opinion, stereo all around. In my opinion, this is a really good thing for our industry. To totally. Have. And I think it's not only good for VR, but it's also really good for overcapture, visual effects. And I see a lot of uses in major blockbusters going forward. Totally. Is this also the very first six stop camera, like from concept to reality? They did talk about this a while ago, right? But we never saw an actual working unit, yeah. right? So this is actually the first of its kind, which I think is a very big deal. Um, you know, like Matt said, the step, a big step forward for the, the industry in general. It feels like super solid too, like the material on it feels like very... Well, good thermal dynamics, if I have a good construction. My question um, is how, like A, how close do you think you could get to this camera in terms of the stereo without getting your, you know, peripheral all crazy? And then B, is every shot in this camera going to be on a tripod? I can't imagine this thing on a dolly, but maybe a Mantis could hold it. Mantis definitely not going to hold this. Um, <laughs> and it handheld. Has to be I'll, I'll walk it. Definitely not. I mean, Just work out a little bit, guys. Well, bring it over here. Bring look at look at this thing over here. Yeah, let's see the box. So, so look at the wire I'm comes about, down. Giant oh, wire. Off so I think wherever here. that camera goes, this I wonder thing what has this button follow. does. <laughs> I don't know how I would monitor this. Like maybe just look at one of the angles or something. It's not really about that. So you have to think of it, I think, a little bit differently than most VR cameras currently on the market. I mean, you're not, if you look at the source footage and the, the demo stuff, it's not a close camera. Like you're not doing people with it. This camera, in my opinion, is more for like plate shots, nature. Yeah. Like think of it like IMAX, you know? Like if you're just gonna shoot like Mount Everest, maybe you could drop this on the bottom of a helicopter or something. I don't know. Like there's things that I think that you might, we haven't even thought of yet. I might not um, want to fly in the helicopter. With <laughs> this thing, you need a helicopter. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm curious to see what people are gonna do with it. Hopefully no one doesn't break it. They probably only have two. I think you're gonna see only a very few productions right now use it. Uh, at least for VR, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if this finds its way into major Hollywood blockbusters for visual yeah. fast plates. Totally. Uh, like they already have similar rigs like this that they use like to do like London Has Fallen, for example. They did a similar rig, didn't have the bottom, but they shot all those plates, uh, and then they filmed the rest of the thing in. Um, it's like Budapest or no? It's like Eastern it, Europe. It has applications equally for regular feature films as well as VR. And you're saying you, you think it'll probably be used almost more for the standard films in order for motion and visual effects. I think one hundred percent. Like the next Mission Impossible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it makes sense. You want to capture a location and then bring back Brad Pitt to like a green screen area and be able to place him in anywhere versus flying him to Nepal or somewhere. It takes a lot of time. And for someone like Brad Pitt, man, he doesn't got a lot of hours. Cool.
Oh, yeah, right. that's my video. Right. Thanks so much. Ch check out LightSail VR, Kodak Pix Pro. These guys are the experts here.